What on earth are you doing? I'm sorry, Doctor. I have an appointment. I'm rather late to tears. I'm sure you'll understand. You may be cold, spoiled, selfish, unfeeling. But there's also a good reason why you're so keyed up, so tense, so ready to explode. I did not come here to be insulted, Dr. Andrews. It's a reason you can't even light a cigarette. And those headaches, your headaches are real. You're absolutely mad. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. You didn't read that card when I showed it to you just now? Of course I read it. It was about your tropical diseases. You didn't read it because there was nothing on it. I don't know why you're fighting it. Or why you're trying to hide it, Miss Brockwood. But I'd say you're rapidly going blind. Catherine Brockwood's the closest thing to royalty in this country. Don't be an ass. Catherine is a tyrant, a despot, a dictator. She's a social monster. Intolerable beast. I was told you were her oldest friend. I resent that aspersion on my age. I am not her oldest friend. I'm her dearest friend. Did her invitation say 7 o'clock? Hours mean nothing to Catherine. When she feels the timing is right, she'll make a regal entrance down those stairs. A sweeping, swirling descent preceded by the fragrance of a perfume so nauseous it will reduce you to a bowl of pablum. I've heard, but I've never seen it. Before she reaches the top step, her voice shatters the air like a fanfare of hunting horns. She starts the conversation two flights up and plows everyone under as she swoops down. Wouldn't it be amusing? Wouldn't what be amusing? If there were no one here when she made her theatrical entrance. Very amusing. Somehow I don't hear the sound of tinkling laughter. It's a wonderful idea. She deserves it. Look, everybody, everybody out on the stairs. I've got an idea. I want the room to be too little in the story. Everybody else. I'm in the stairs. Everybody, come on. Come on, little idea. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the matter? Everybody out on the stairs. Come on. She'll be down there. Richard, you know how Catherine knows practical jokes. She'll be furious. Don't worry, my pet. I'll take care of the whole thing. Well, I hope you do. Shh. Here she comes. My sweet, you have been absolute dears to wait so patiently. I do hate being tardy, you know, but I can never make up my mind whether to infuriate the ladies by being false as a sheep or devastate the mayor with something ravishing the feminine. <laughs> Ah, how touching. You're all going to jump over the ledge just to amuse me. We simply got tired of waiting for you to come down, Angel Puss. It's peasants like you, sweetheart, that make me regret I ever came down at all. Catherine, you look marvelous. So rested and after only two weeks in Trinidad. Ah, Trinidad. You must hear me play the bongos. I am sensational. I took lessons from two native boys. Absolute dog. Real boar skin. Ah, Richard, you must be very careful if you go to Trinidad. You might become a bongo. <laughs> a sickening pun, Angel Puss. What are you doing here, Tony? Well, I thought that... You thought? I thought I made it quite clear that you bore me. Go away. 
Captain, listen. Go away. Catherine, how can you treat anyone like that? After all, he is a human being. Who said so? Thank you. Angel Puss, I love your parties. They're so blood-curdling. Already this charming group looks like the tail end of a three-day scalping party. There is not a decent scalp among you. It's all very tiresome. No contest, no challenge. I have a new challenge for you. I took the liberty of inviting him up this evening. Ah, oh, sweetheart. Any friend of yours would be an absolute embassy. Oh, he's not my friend. He loathes me. Oh. He sounds promising. He's tall, rugged, bronzed. The outdoor type, I think. What do you mean, you think? I haven't been outdoors in years. He's a kind of nut. He's a doctor in a tropical jungle, and he's uh, studying postgraduate witchcraft, I believe. Well, where is this paragon? Oh, he'll be along. He's quite destitute, so uh, be a dear girl and give him a generous check. He needs a half a million to establish a jungle clinic. Oh, half a million? To establish a clinic? For that much, I could establish a jungle. Huh. That's my great, great, great grandfather, Augustus Brockwood. And you must be Catherine Brock. Yes, I am. I'm Dr. Martin. I know, yeah. Richard, tell me. Well, I didn't know when Dick invited me that it was... Well, I'm afraid I'm not dressed properly. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You could have come in your stethoscope. Well, I won't intrude on your party, Miss Brockwood. Maybe some other time. May I have a cigarette, please? Oh, certainly. Practice in uh, Zamboanga or some outlandish place like that, don't you? Yes, I have a small clinic in the Solomons. Now, look, please don't let me keep you from your guests. Stay right where you are. Don't move. Everybody out! Oh, I have a beastly headache. You must have something better to do anyway. Oh, now, Captain, there's nothing wrong with you at all. You've never looked better. I am in absolute torture. Now, let's see how quickly we can clear the place. Go along, darling. No, no, take your champagne with you. Press on, press on. Is this usual with her? Anything unusual is usual with her, my dear. Au revoir, Andy. You've been too understanding. I'm really sorry about the headache. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Valerie. I bet you're not sorry about the opera. Richard tells me that you're tone deaf. Be an angel and give the tickets to some lovable shoemaker. Good night. Hello. Oh, hello, Dick. You got here. And you got here just in time to be ordered out. Catherine's ill. Yes, I'm dying, and he's a doctor, so good night, sweetheart. <laughs> now, we can have a nice long chat about migraines. I don't chat about medicine. I practice it. Oh, yes, yes, I know that. Richard told me that you need financing for your tropical clinic. If you will just wait here one moment, I'll get my checkbook. No, thank you. I'll make other arrangements. But I am deeply interested in your work, darling. Then I'll be delighted to send you a copy of my book, which I wrote for the medical clinic. I settle for the book when I have the author. I'm afraid that would be unwise. You're rather tense and tied up. I think a book, a little solitude, and uh, introspection might be good for you. Good night, Miss Brockwood. I've enjoyed meeting you.
Good morning, Miss Proctor. How are you? All right, Frank. I hope you don't mind my barging in like this. Not at all, as you say. It's your name over the building. Oh, to be quite truthful, I never knew I even cared until a few hours ago. Now you suddenly have a mad impulse to delve into medicine. I'm very sorry about last night, Doctor. I was a bit uh, tactless. Richard told me that you needed money for your clinic, but I did act a bit hastily in offering it. I may have been a little hasty in refusing it. Good. Then we can talk about it any time you wish. Is it, uh, is it all right to smoke in here? Oh, certainly. Ah, oh, good. Thank you. I'm not some wasted wench with the creeping tropical disease, darling. Sorry. I didn't mean to stare. Oh, I love stares, but not clinical ones. You may be uh, interested in reading about some of my research in tropical diseases. How exciting. I'd love to hear everything about your work, Doctor. And you may be interested in this experiment. Is it customary to pursue germs in the dark, Doctor? What on earth are you doing? I'm sorry, Doctor. I have an appointment. I'm rather lazy to tears. I'm sure you'll understand. You may be cold, spoiled, selfish, unfeeling. But there's also a good reason why you're so keyed up, so tense, so ready to explode. I did not come here to be insulted, Dr. Andrews. It's a reason you can't even light a cigarette. And those headaches, your headaches are real. You're absolutely mad. I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. You didn't read that card when I showed it to you just now? Of of course I read it. It was about your tropical diseases. You didn't read it because there was nothing on it. I don't know why you're fighting it. Or why you're trying to hide it, Miss Brockwood. But I'd say you're rapidly going blind. This is something unique I picked up in Bangkok. He doesn't look well at all, Richard. Don't you have some nice, healthy, shrunken heads or something? <laughs> Don't be bourgeois, darling. This has great artistry. Can't you just feel a nerve-wracked torture in the sculptor's soul? I don't care. I'm very fond of shrunken heads. <laughs> Take a good look around the room, my pet. You'll never find a better collection. Now, this mask is one of the few real East Indian teakwood pieces in existence. Really, Richard, you should charge admission. This is an absolute museum. Well, I don't know if it's this room or the cocktails, but I'm beginning to feel a little giddy. It's neither, darling. It's my intoxicating personality. Now, for you experienced connoisseurs, I have more lovely new toys here. It's by Claude Monet, I believe. Oh, how do you do, Doctor? I didn't know that you had been invited. Or do you simply drop in everywhere without an invitation? Were you trying to read the artist's signature? I think we said everything that ought to be said about my infirmities at our last meeting. All right, then let's say some things that need to be said. I'm in the habit of directing the conversation around me, Dr. Andrews. Naturally. If you talk loud enough and constantly enough, you can almost live without thinking. Ever since we've met, I've had the feeling that you've been studying and watching and observing me. Impersonally. Like one of your primitive outpatients in the Malayan jungle. I can't understand why a person of intelligence would allow her vision to go bad without doing something about it. There. I believe that is the customary correction. Is it vanity that keeps you from using them? They don't help. Besides, I've learned to cope with the problem quite well. But the condition is getting progressively worse. No, it's not. I think it is. I think you know how serious your condition is, but you're being childish and kidding yourself. Has your doctor ever suggested the possibility of a corneal transplant? Yes, he has. 
But I could not wear the eyes of someone who just died. It's a horrible thought. Seeing the world through the eyes of a stranger. Feeling you've been looking at the world through the eyes of a stranger for some time. I wish you'd go away, please. I have a way of hanging around like a bad conscience or a knowing truth. Let's get out of here, shall we? All right. But I don't know why. You don't enchant me one little bit. Where are we going? Any place where you can do a little serious listening. Listening? I never stop talking, haven't you heard? Sooner or later, you'll stop to take a breath. Perhaps. But I will never consent to that gruesome operation. Of course. Oh, good. I'm glad you made it. I was afraid you might change your mind at the last minute. I've changed my mind a thousand times in the last minute. Really, Mark, you might have picked a more elegant hospital. This one doesn't even have a doorman. Now, look, Dick, there isn't much time. These things have to be done within a few hours from the time the eyes are deposited in the eye bank. Now, why don't you run along and leave us, hmm? Now, insist on imported caviar with every meal. You can get it if you make a terrible row. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to stay or not. You made the reservation. You can't back out now. People wait years for this opportunity. You'd be depriving one of them. I know that, Doc. Well, sweetheart, send me thousands of flowers and dainty Valentine's things. Good luck, Angel Puss. I'll come around and see you when you've lost that nauseating antiseptic smell. I should never have stopped talking. You got a word in edgewise, and here I am. Stop worrying. This is not an unusual operation today. You feel like a new woman. I'm not sure that I'm through with the old one yet, darling. I uh, couldn't help wondering on the way down here, do... Do they tell you whose eyes you're getting? Dr. Parker said the man preferred to remain anonymous. Uh, a man's eyes? Well, certain eyes are interchangeable, like the lenses on a camera. Only the makes of cameras are different. What kind of a man... Is he? I mean, was he? He was a very remarkable and wonderful man. He was a priest. Now, come along. I'll show you to your room. Ridiculous. Isn't what ridiculous? Throwing popcorn to the pigeons. I haven't done this since I was a child. You know, you have probed around in my life and confused things pretty badly. Well, I'll, I'll be leaving for the islands again next week. Must you? Can't do any more damage around here. Oh, yes, you could. Much more. Much more. By the way, thanks for the donation. Donation? The directors at the Medical Foundation told me this morning that quite a large anonymous contribution had been made toward my clinic. I appreciate it. I really don't understand the art of doing things anonymously, do I? I suppose the amount was too huge and splashy. I should have dribbled it out in small batches. Well, the interesting part of it is that you tried to be anonymous. I won't make that mistake again. I will scream my wonderful gestures from the rooftops, as I have always done. I don't think you will. You know, since the operation, I've noticed quite a change. Oh, nonsense. I'm no different than I was before. I just see better, that's all. You see differently. 
There's been a psychological change. I'm still weak. I'll be just as incorrigible as ever when I get my strength back. I don't think so, Catherine. You see, the world looks differently to you now. I asked uh, at the hospital about the priest. Why? Well, I wanted to find out his name. Did they tell you his name? No, they told me that he wanted to remain unknown. I am so deeply grateful for the precious gift he gave me. I, I would like to do something worthwhile for him in his name. You can. Just be worthwhile. Oh, this is really too idiotic. I have not become a saint just because I have the eyes of a good man. And I'm not very apt to become one either. You're fighting a losing battle. I never lose a battle. Sure. Well, I've got to get back to the laboratory for a few hours. I'll see you tonight for dinner. Yes. Yeah. Sure you'll be all right? Oh, I'll be all right. What could happen to me in Central Park? with my little chaperone. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I didn't hear you come down. I've never seen the room look so lovely, Fielding. Oh, thank you, madam. Oh, that must be Dr. Andrews. Show him in, will you please? May I help you, sir? Oh, hello, Fielding. How's everything? Very good, thank you, sir. Good. Thanks. Ah, welcome to the celebration. What are we celebrating? My defeat. I lost the battle, just as you predicted. You didn't lose, Catherine. You won completely. All right, so I won the battle. Do you think I'll win the war? I think so. Am I the first one here? The first and only one. Lonesome? No. I'm delighted. <sighs> Doesn't it look like a well-baited trap? A pit and a snare if I ever saw one. <laughs> Tell me, Mark. Angel Puss, I've come to rescue you. you. Hello, sweetheart. I just barged in to sweep you out to some fascinating bistro. Hello, Dick. Good to see you. Hello, Mark. It's so dark and eerie in here. What is it, a wake? It is anything but a wake. It's a celebration, and you're just in time to join us. Well, I must say, your guest list has certainly dwindled. Is this the only friend you can scare up uh, these days? All insults aside, I owe you quite a debt for bringing me up here the first time. Don't feel indebted. Just send me a chafing dish, an expensive one. <laughs> I'm the one who's indebted. I'll give you anything your greedy little heart desires. You're so impossibly light and gay, you've become absolutely unbearable. I know, darling, I'm divine. But I must say, I've never seen you look happier or more beautiful. You're simply radiant since your operation, darling. Richard, you're a slobbering old sentimentalist. But I love it. I tell feeling to set another place. I meant that. You've made a new and wonderful person out of Catherine. No, not me, Dick. She did it all by herself. I can't say that I'll ever get used to the new Catherine. She's so saccharine. You've reduced her to nothing but a good woman. No, it's mostly psychological. The operation, the new eyes, really had very little to do with it. I wonder. She suddenly seems to be seeing with the eyes of that priest. Those weren't the eyes of a priest at all. Really? Then whose? They were the eyes of a condemned man who was executed just a few hours before the operation. The eyes of a murderer. Uh, I don't know why I feel so wonderful. With a monster and a witch doctor. But I do. I do.